Okay, this is going to be a quick video of using a dial indicator to level the bed. This is happens to be a Ray 3D N2 Plus, uh, the biggest model, but this is also applicable to the Ray 3D uh, N2. The only difference being the N2 is slightly shorter. Um, the first thing is kind of an understanding of how the bed leveling actually works. So I'm going to show you here. Basically, at each point, at each leveling point, there are two screws left and right, and then there's a third uh, M3 nut that sticks down. Okay, basically the M3 nut is pulling the bed down to your sub Z plate. It's attached in the aluminum plate and it's pulling it down. The other two screws push up and they're your actual adjusting screws. So basically, uh, what you want to do is, um, depending on first, you got to kind of figure out where you're at. So I've installed the dial indicator mod I showed in my previous video. It's just mounted to the second extruder. Um, there's that front facing M4 screw. And this is just a bent aluminum bracket I made. I'm sure we can make printable brackets. This is just quick and easy. The reason why I use the dial indicator is this is a much better visual indicator than trying to use the traditional feeler gauge or paper method specifically about leveling. Now Z-gap is a different uh, operation here. This is about ensuring that the plane of motion that the nozzle moves in is parallel to the plane of the bed surface. Um, and that's how we set a uniform Z-gap. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, as you can see, the plunger of the dial indicator sticks down below the current surface of the nozzle. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is use the jog menu here and I'm going to raise a few millimeters of z-axis and uh, let me show you here so what's going to happen is and you can actually see on the dial indicator as soon as it hits the dial indicator is going to begin to move as soon as it starts making contact there we just moved I'm going to go ahead and go one more move and let's go one more just to make sure one more millimeter uh, oops I didn't get it there okay there we go so now basically I've got it compressed but my nozzle as you can see is not it's there's a gap it's not going to hit the bed okay but I have some uh, movement here on the dial indicator from where it was at, at zeroed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move manually because only Z-axis is holding now. So I'm going to move this as far as I can here so the dial indicator is in the corner. Now if I move the head all the way full front corner, the dial indicator is going to drop off. But I'm here on the edge of the glass. Basically I want to be over this, this leveling point you can kind of see here in the frame. So I'm not exactly over it, but I'm reasonably close by it. Now what happens is you'll take an M2.5, um, the original Allen keys that, uh, sorry, I'm trying to take a picture here, in the toolkit, you have the M2.5, which is the, uh, I believe, the middle one. This would be, there, there are two sizes smaller than this included in the toolkit. And this is, like I said, the third one up, so it's a, a 2.5 millimeter Allen key. Now what I like to do is I bought these nicer uh, ball tipped, they have the nice ball tip drivers so they can go in at an angle um, style uh, drivers for working on RC cars and helicopters and planes and stuff, but these, these apply. So what I want to do is, I'm going to take the screw that's nearest, okay, so if I turn it down, if I turn it down, you saw the needle move, right? And if I turn it the other way, it goes back up. Now here's what I'm going to do. First step is, you're going to take the ring on the indicator, okay? And we're going to turn the dial and basically set our zero point here in the corner, right? So. You just kind of bump it, tap it a couple times. You'll see the dial indicator move, but it'll settle to a position. So I basically set my zero position. Again, I'm going to move it back in the corner. Look at the dial indicator. I can move zero. 
well, we'll just see. So the key is that one moved a little bit away from zero. Okay, so now I go back to this back corner and then I back off. See, that's currently leveled. That corner is good at zero to my original point. This corner, good, zero. This corner, well, let's see if it's a little bit off. Yeah, this corner is a little bit high. So what I can do is, this corner, if I go ahead, I'm sorry for the lighting here, I apologize. I'm just going to go ahead and turn these, the two outer screws. And this should help pull this corner down a little bit towards zero. See if I put my hand, if I put pressure on it and pull down, the dial indicator moves. And in this case, what I want to do is now I'm going to tighten up the M3 a little bit, the M3 nut. And I'm also using this as another driver. I have 5.5 millimeter uh, fits the uh, M3 size nut. So I'm going to tighten that up a little bit and watch, keep my eye on the dial indicator. Now watch. As I tighten that screw, or that, I'm sorry, that nut, that M3 nut, it literally moves the needle on the dial indicator. So now we've got this corner zeroed. So now I'm going to go back. I have to walk around that bracket there, or that clip. Now this one is also low. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to adjust this here. See, that's the wrong way. So if I loosen the M3, it goes the wrong way. So what I want to do is tighten it, which means I have to I'm sorry, I have to lower this a little bit. So, what I'm going to do is take the... Now see, I just want to see if you can see this with the camera. Right now, the way I have this adjusted, the screws are not even touching the uh, fiberglass uh, protective PCB that's underneath the aluminum heater plate. So that means that I should be able to pull down on the corner with my finger and you can see the dial indicator. So now if I tighten this M3 here, it's going to move, the, see, it's going to move the dial indicator right to zero. Now I'm going to go back and take the nuts or I'm sorry, the uh, set screws. And I'm gonna watch the dial indicator. What I'm gonna do is screw it up until it just, see if I, if I screw the screw up, and as soon as it starts hitting, it's gonna dial that down. So now, I've touched, both screws are now touching the bed and watching the dial indicator, I've fine-tuned this, and if I do a little more here. I should be able to achieve. That perfect zero that I was looking for. And I've now leveled that corner. So again... I can check this again across corners you know this one I could go just a tiny bit there we go perfect and this will get net you a perfectly leveled bed again dead on zero dead on zero and then I go to the center and the same thing, the center gap, I can adjust.
There we go. And get it dead on. So again, I'm dead in, dead on in the center. I just do a five point system. I mean, you could do a nine point or whatever, but I just do the four corners basically. Perfect. Oops. Let me get it to settle. Now, now see, that corner is just a tad. So now we're going to reset this corner. So we're going to adjust the nearest leveling point. You're basically going to work those three in combination. There's the, the M3 nut and then the two um, M4 basically leveling adjusters. To get each point exactly where you want it. And now that's set. Again, sometimes you just have to bump it and kind of see where it's going to settle because there is a little flex in the bracket but it it's repeatable enough that it reliably sets back to the same position every time and that is a level bit 